This video is going to show you one way you can have students log in to your Seesaw class. So first, you want to make sure you've added all your students to your class. Next, to find the code for students, you're going to click on your profile name and choose the class you want students to enter. I'm going to choose this one. And then once you've clicked on the class, you're going to come down here to Students. And you're going to need to click Skip. This will then open up the code that you need. So there are different ways to join. You can join with a Google um, account or email. You can join with a QR code or you can join with a code that students type in. I'm choosing that my students will enter with this code. Notice there is a countdown from 60 minutes. So this code will only be active for one hour and that's really just to protect your account so that you don't have others joining your class when they shouldn't. So what you can do is shine this up on the board and leave it up there for the whole hour if you are using it for an hour. Students will type in this code and once they're in they won't need that code anymore. So it's okay if the code expires while they're using it because once they're in they can remain in until the next time that they log in and when that happens you'll be given a different code. So it tells you in the directions what to do. Students will click on the iPad app. They're going to choose I'm a student and they're going to type in this code. So I'm going to go over here to the student view and here I'm on a computer but it works the same way on an iPad. You open up the iPad app. Students will click I'm a student and down here they're going to type in that code. And they will say go and now they are in your Seesaw class. So I'm going to open this up so we can look a little bit better at what it looks like on the student's end. So we have the journal and activities option and let's start with the journal since it's currently selected. The student can add something to their journal. I'll demonstrate this option. Oops, a little lopsided heart, but notice we have tools over here, down here and to the side. We can also trash it or undo something. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark because I am done and would like to post it. And now you see that I'm going to choose who I am. So I will select find and select my name. And then I will hit the green check mark again and it will post to my Yay, it tells me this post has been added. It'll post to my journal as soon as the teacher approves it. Now that's a teacher setting. You can choose as a teacher to let the journal's uh, entries post immediately or upon your approval. All right, if I'm completing an activity, it's kind of the same idea. I find an activity I'm going to do. If there are more than one, I would scroll. And to answer the activity, I click Add Response. And again, I have to select my name from the list. So if you've got, you know, 20 kids, there's going to be 20 names there, and the student will need to find their name. One thing you could try and do is add a profile picture. If they don't know how to um, spell their name yet, that profile picture could be very helpful. So I'm Jojo, so I'm going to click Jojo, and now I'm going to be able to complete this activity. So there are directions right here that I can look at anytime I want. There are even audio directions, so if I'm not a reader, this will read to me what I'm supposed to do. And then this is the select tool, so I'm going to select the tool so that I can move objects. And I can sort real quick. I have other tools as well, but the directions don't have me using these tools, but I could. I believe the directions asked me to make a quick recording of what I sorted. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. I need to allow my microphone to start recording. I simply click here. And now I am currently recording and I can say I, I sorted triangles, circles, and squares. When I'm done recording, I simply click done. And then when I'm all done, I can hit the green check mark to submit this to my teacher. Once my teacher grades it, it will show up in my journal. 
So that's the student's point of view. I can click my student profile up here to sign out when I am done. It's important to teach students to sign out so that the next student using the iPad won't accidentally um, log in as them. All right, so back in the teacher's view, I can click the class name and I can see all of my students' posts, whether it's a journal entry like those two or an assignment post like this one. And if my students left audio, I can push play and listen to it. Here's another audio. I can also sort by student. So Jojo made some posts, so I can click her name and see just her posts, her assignments and her journals. In addition, I can go to my inbox and click notifications and it will tell me who's added what and what they added and again I can click on it and go directly there if I would like to. Back in activities I can scroll down and browse the activity library where I can look at the community library or my library. I can sort by grade level and subject so maybe I will pick kindergarten math and if I find an item that I like I can simply hard it to put it in my library or I can go ahead and assign it if I'm ready to use it or I can click these three dots and share or print the activity. I'm going to go ahead and hard it so that it shows up in my library. So here's that activity, so I can now open it up, and when I'm ready, I can assign it to students. Which class do I want to assign it to? I'm going to assign it to that class and say Assign. I can go ahead and view this activity in my class, or if I want to, I can just X out so I can continue searching the library. I'm going to go ahead and move to my class. And it typically loads um, toward the top. I have this assignment pinned at the top. So this one's always going to be first. I pin an assignment by coming here. So in this case, I can unpin the activity. And if that's the case, my newest assignment should show up at the top like this one. So right now, I don't have any responses. I don't have any that need approval and um, I've got two assignments and neither one have started this assignment. If I want to move though to one that has been graded, actually I mean to say one that hasn't been graded, so I'm going to pick Jojo. I'm going to find something that hasn't been graded yet. I don't So this one's been graded. I like to like it to remind myself I've already graded it. You can see I left Jojo a comment. Whereas this one I haven't done yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and like it and leave Jojo a comment. Purple Oops. Ah, is the color of royalty. And then I can post that comment. Other things I can do is I can pin it to the top if I don't want to lose track of it in the journal thread. Maybe it's her best work yet and so I want to make sure that's up at the top so it doesn't get missed. I can print or save the item but I wanted to show you that you can share the item. You can copy this link that one right there and you could send that to Jojo's parents in an email and they'd be able to see it as well. So it's kind of a nice little feature especially if you um, are inviting parents into your Seesaw class. All right I think the only other thing we haven't talked about is down here adding students so we can add names. We can paste a list of names. So if we have a roster somewhere, we could copy it and paste it in to make the process go a little bit quicker. We can invite families, although it sounds like you're using talking points for that. So I'll let you decide if that's something you're interested in. 
Over in our profile is where we can create a new class if we need to. We've got the settings gear there if we need any other information. And finally, our settings gear over here is where we can set up some of the requirements or turn off some requirements. So we've got our name here, our grade level here. We've got um, our teacher. We can have a co-teacher, but you can only have one co-teacher in the free version. So you can invite one person if you want to. Class theme, you could change that and the icon. How are students signing in? Because you are sharing devices, I recommend this first option, which is the option I showed you at the beginning of the video. Managing students, just going to show you again all those students. You can click there if you need to change something, change their icon, etc. Or, or let me point out, remove a student if you have somebody move away. And you can add a student as well there. You can home learning codes. That was created for e-learning where students can log in from home because remember that code expires after 60 minutes. So how do you have a code that lasts longer than that? This is where you could go for the home learning codes and you can download some codes. Um, just make sure when you share them you're doing so securely so that um, you don't have outsiders in your class or you don't have um, students seeing each other's work, etc. So read through this. Um, feel free to email me if you have questions about the home uh, learning codes. If you don't see that option in your menu yet, I believe you do have to have a student join at least once. So you type their name in, but they actually have to join your class at least once before this pops up. At least that was um, how I experienced it on my end. Student likes and comments. Do you want them to be able to like each other's posts? Think of like Facebook and liking thumbs up. And do you want them to be able to comment on each other's posts? Depending on your grade level, um, yes to likes and then maybe yes to comments although if they're really young I would leave that off. Do you want to have the students be able to see each other's work? So can they see each other's posts in the journal? You can toggle that on or off, that's a preference. Do you want to have to re approve any items that get posted before anyone including the student who posted it can see it? I like to require the items just so that I can get a quick glimpse before they're posted, but you can also turn that off if you would like to. Item editing, do you want the students to be able to edit their posts and drafts? Um, or do you want them to be able to tag posts? I have that turned off for young kids. Maybe when they're older I turn it on, but that's a preference for you to decide. There is a sample student in case you want like a fake student in your class to see what happens with the fake student. So you can enable that. You'll see it over here, sample student. But once you kind of have the hang of it, if that's in your way, um, you can turn it off. If you choose to invite your families into um, your Seesaw, go ahead and enable that and follow the directions it gives you. You can tie your Seesaw to a blog, that's an option, and you can create folders and manage skills. At this point though, you are on the free version, and so some of this is a little bit limiting on the free version, um, but you're certainly welcome to try it out. I was able to make a couple of folders and place some uh, assignments in folders, so I know you're able to do some of this on the free version. Um, this is just, if you're taking pictures with that iPad, do you want to save it to the camera roll? Um, and you can. Uh, you could do this, I think, with your laptop too, probably because your laptop has a camera. It might get a little tricky with your desktop not having a camera though. And this is where you can come at the end of the year to archive your class when you are done with it. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. I would be happy to come over and help out with your class getting started with Seesaw.